Hi everyone, um, I'm Liz Pazler and this is actually my first YouTube video. Um, I wanted my first video to be kind of what I do every single day. So um, I wanted to go through my dry skin routine, especially now that it's we're changing weather a little bit. So it's still gonna be on the heavier side, um, more, more winter. Um, and as we transition in, I'll probably update something, you know, this kind of a video with what I would do for the spring. Um, and then along with that, I want to do my uh, minimal makeup routine that I'll use um, when I was going to work every single day um, before the quarantine. And I'll actually do this now just to uh, spruce up my look a little bit um, before I log into my computer remotely um, for how we're, you know, working now. So um, the first thing I like to do um, is go through my skin um, as, you know, many people do with your skincare and everything like that. It always comes first. Um, so I'm super, super into my skin, um, very into like making a complexion look very dewy and healthy and um, kind of like that inner glow. But like I said, I'm dry and I'm extremely sensitive. So anything like touching my skin will make me super red. Um, so you'll see how I apply different products to avoid that from happening. Um, I also have different reactions to different products. Um, you know, if there's like a lot of fragrance in there, there are certain ingredients like castor oil is a really big thing for me. Um, I actually break out everywhere from castor oil. So I stay away from that. I don't use any like lash enhancers or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me um, and my skin. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is um, use my Ceramid and Cream Mist from Dr. Jart. So this I actually didn't get in the United States from any stores around here. They don't carry it here, but I got it from um, an online website. I don't know why I said online website. I got it online from um, a website called um, Style Korean, and they're actually uh, internationally shipping. So they have a ton of Korean beauty products on there, some stuff that, again, you can't get here in the States. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite products, and um, it's it's so incredibly moisturizing and I absolutely am crazy about it. I accidentally uh, ordered two of these actually. So super grateful that I did that by accident. So first thing I'm gonna do is I usually just um, spritz this all over my face. And it's super, like I said, it's super hydrating, but when you put it on, it's very lightweight. Um, but if you do touch it, you will feel that it is a little bit, it's like kind of silky-ish. Um, so I, I gently pat it in. You can see like right here, I really am super, super red today. Um, definitely uh, don't, <laughs> it's not happens every day. So um, yeah, so it, it actually, it gets hot sometimes too. So I sometimes have to cool myself down while I'm doing my makeup. Uh, second step um, is my facial oil. So you can use, again, anything that's working for you. I personally really love the LMS Superfood facial oil. Uh, I think it's incredibly hydrating. Um, it doesn't irritate my skin. It doesn't have like those intense fragrances in it. So yeah, like when you smell it, it just, it just smells like, I guess what you think a facial oil would smell like. It doesn't have like a rosy or anything like that and kind of scent like that. Um, so for this, I actually, you can kind of just pull it out with a dropper. I take um, probably three to four drops and I just kind of move it around in my hands and warm it up. And then I just press right in. And I, av I avoid going here because I don't want there to be too much product in there because then it'll make my eyeliner and mascara melt a bit. So next thing I like to do is go right into my moisturizer. So right now I'm in between moisturizers, as I like to say. Um, I'm testing different ones. Um, the one that I'm using currently is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Um, I only got an ounce of this because I didn't know how I was going to like it. And I also got it during the Nordstrom sale, so it was a little bit cheaper than it normally is, um, which I really like. Um, and initially, I was a little bit against this because I saw on this website slash app called Think Dirty that it had a very high grade, which you don't want. You want to be lower. You want to be in the green. And um, a lot of it is due to fragrance. So I kept hearing such amazing things about it. Um, I actually saw that Tati Westbrook was using it and I know that she's extremely sensitive to fragrances. So I thought I'd give it a shot if she was really, really loving it the way that she does. So I actually tried it and it's not affecting my skin at all. Um, I guess maybe it's certain fragrances. I'm still kind of figuring that out. Um, but yeah, I would say that this is great for sensitive skin if you're sensitive to fragrances like me. 
Um, so I actually took, let me move this back on here. I took about this amount of it or this much of it. Um, and I like to, again, warm this up in my hands and then I just press it right into my skin. And again, I'm avoiding my under eye. Should be just about it. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have a strong scent to it, which is nice. Okay. And then now since, again, I'm keeping this more on the winter side of things because it is April. It's still a little bit chilly out um, and it's very dry in my apartment. So I definitely try to load up on tons of moisture. Um, I'm going to be using the Glossier um, Priming Moisturizer. And I like to use this bef like when I'm actually going to be wearing makeup because I do the double moisturizer again because it's so dry. and I don't want my makeup to look really like cakey or anything like that. So they have the priming moisturizer rich, which I would recommend if you're not using another moisturizer underneath it. Um, I feel like it'd just be like a little too much. And then you have, you know, the uh, chance of your makeup falling up on top of it, which we don't want. So I took about this much and again, warming it up in my hands and then I'm gonna press it right into my skin. And again, avoiding my under eyes. So I use the Kiehl's Creamy um, eye treatment, which everyone knows and loves by now. Um, this is pretty thick, so I actually like to grab like just the side of uh, of this container, and I pull out probably about this amount onto my fingers, and I actually tap them bet between my two ring fingers, just to kind of warm it up because it, it, like I said, it's really creamy, it's really thick, which is what we want, and then I just pat it right underneath. Remember, don't don't rub it in. Definitely just pat it in for two reasons because we want to make sure that we're getting the best application of this. And uh, well, I guess for hydrating reasons and to avoid fine lines. So when you pull, you're creating those fine lines. I got some premature fine lines, I would say, when I turned 25 and my skin just decided to lose a little bit of collagen, which is always lovely. Okay, so that kind of concludes the skincare portion. Super hydrated up, super, you know, already pretty dewy. Um, I like to move in with kind of like um, a little bit of primer. I don't go heavy on the primers because again, I like to keep this kind of look. And I also don't need another hydrating primer because it would be a little too much, I think, because I'm already using so much moisturizer and that works really well for me as a primer. Um, I usually use the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. This one is shade two light. Um, it looks pretty dark for my skin tone, as you can see, um, and it looks a little yellow, but when it goes, when you put it on your skin, it blends in so beautifully. So I actually just put this right on the high points of my face. So you're gonna do it kind of like I guess on this like initial more jutting out bone of your skull here down to like your temples area. Um, and again, tops of your cheekbones. Got some hair here, hold on. Um, and then I like to do the bridge of my nose. Then a little on my chin, like that. It's super, super, super hydrating. So I just will warn against that. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it would be great for um, more of an oily leaning skin. So this one I actually do pull out a little bit, but I'm very gentle because sometimes patting it in it takes forever and I get a little impatient, but you know, I need to work on that. <laughs> All right, so it shows this like really beautiful kind of um, glow that actually will poke through, you know, and, and show through your foundation and concealer, whatever you like to use. Um, if you do have oily skin, actually, I would really recommend this by Terry CC Correcting Serum. Um, I have shade two rose elixir. It this is very heavy fragranced. It didn't bother me that much initially, but I think my skin was heating up a little bit when I was wearing it. It has very heavy rose smell, let me tell you. Um, but this is actually really nice. Again, it just it brightens up your skin, um, and it'll leave that kind of like really pretty um, glow. It's not as intense as the as the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, but still something that I very highly recommend. Um, it does soak into your skin because it is like a, oh, I almost dropped it. Um, the, it is more of like a serum based formula, so it will act like a serum. So it will, you know, 
kind of move into your skin a little bit more. So that's why I do think it will work a little bit better for more of um, an oilier type. Let's do eyes. So I like to use the Painterly Pro Longwear Paint Pot from MAC to prime my eyes. Um, I have some oily eyelids, so I like to just kind of take one, literally I take like a swipe. And then I just kind of pat and swipe onto my eyelid. I don't like to do too much of a tug again, fine lines, but just like tapping in here. Um, this is really nice because it definitely does help with oily eyelids. And um, sometimes if I'm feeling a little too oily there, I will use a little bit of setting powder, but it has to be really finely milled because if it's not, it may look a little bit cakey because it definitely does dry as more of like a, a long wear type um, product. So I prime with that first. And then I actually will go in with some eyeliner. I sometimes do skip it if I'm running late. You don't really don't need it, but sometimes I like to have a little bit of like a wing action. But again, I do a quick one. I don't do anything too crazy. Um, I don't have time for anything too crazy in the morning because I do like to sleep a little bit more. But what I do use is the Trish McEvoy Intense Gel Liner. I have them in black and charcoal, but this is charcoal. And as you can see, it is super, super, super um, used up. Um, I sometimes will just like kind of swipe it on my eyelid, but be, when I'm doing a winged liner, I actually really like to use this Anastasia 7B angled brush. It's actually meant for your eyebrows, but I really love it for some, um, some winged liner. So again, like I said, I do a very quick kind of simple winged liner and I'm going to pull myself in a little bit so you can see. Um, I have hooded lids, so it, sometimes it's a little more challenging to do a winged liner. I don't have a lot of lid space. And as you can see here, it folds over a little bit and my eyelids aren't as taut. So I had to kind of figure out how to do it because I really love that look. Um, and I firmly believe that after going through this process of figuring out how to use, uh, or how rather how to apply um, winged liner, that anyone can use it. Any eye shape, anyone can do it with this kind of method. Um, I definitely did not, was not the first one to develop this, but it's something that I do use um, every day and some people come to me for advice on it and this is kind of what I recommend for them to do. Um, and like I said, I'm not like a makeup artist or anything like that, I'm not the inventor of this. Um, but if you initially just follow your lower lash line right here, that's how you're gonna create your first line for the wing. So that's how I kind of do it. So I pretend like I'm drawing down here. And then once I get to the corner of the eye, I just create just a straight line right here. And that's gonna be like your starting point. So um, after that, I will actually just kind of either like, you know, slightly pump up my lash line here and just draw a nice light line. And if you want to, you can just pat, and st or rather stamp onto here. And you want to, you do want to connect it with this line here. Actually, this line is a little bit lower than I, where I'd want it to be. So I'm just gonna redraw that really quickly. There we go. That's more of where I want it. It's gonna be a little too long, but I like to just draw a little bit of extra, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so I'm just gonna finish drawing this line on my mobile lid here. And sometimes I do mess up and that is why I do my eyes first, because I feel like everyone messes up sometimes, you know? And I'm telling you, it really, this, this whole routine doesn't really take that long. I'm just talking through it so it makes it seem like it's long, but really doesn't especially once you get the hang of this kind of method it'll go even faster to start to connect this line here with this line here so I usually just do it in gentle strokes to see how the wing looks as I go as I move up to see what, what like thickness I want okay that's kind of what I'm looking for see how it looks yeah so like I said, this line is sometimes too long. I mean, if you love this kind of line, stay with it. For me, 
I'm going to just knock this down a little bit. It's perfect. Okay, so that's how it looks. Um, I think it looks great on a hooded lid, um, especially if you have if you have a lid even even that drags over a little bit more. I think this still works. You may just have to make this initial line right here a little bit thinner. That's my only kind of you know critique there. And just keep drawing past any kind of fold you have. Just draw like it's not there anymore. That's super important too. I feel like anybody can pull off a cat eye. You just have to work with what you have and what eye shape you have. So um, I'm going to do my other eye. Okay, so we're all done with that. Um, sorry, I was just checking the camera to make sure it looks um, even, which it, you know, it does look pretty even, which I'm very happy with. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I want to curl my lashes. So. I have hard to curl lashes. They are mostly straight. Um, so I use a combination of a good eyelash curler, which I use the Kevin O'Quan eyelash curler. And I use um, the Dior over, no, Dior, I, Dior Show Iconic Over Curl in Waterproof. And I use black. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is start to curl my lashes. So we're all curled up here. Um, and then I'm going to, so I really love this brush because it's so curved like this. Um, and I just really think that, it, I, I don't know why, but I feel like it does help in curling it, but mostly it's the formula that helps to curl it. I like to look down so I can see the bases of my lashes. You do wanna see the base and you wanna make sure that you're applying the mascara on the base. It helps lift up your eyelashes and give you a look of a bigger eye. So you wanna start at the base and make sure you're pulling all the way up and separating out the lashes as you're going too, because you don't want it to be clumpy. Um, and by looking down, I actually found that um, it helps me not get as much mascara on my lids, because sometimes it does happen to me. It's very frustrating, especially when you're ready to eyeshadow. There's nothing worse. <laughs> All right, so big lashes right now. I really love this mascara. Actually, another mascara that I really love is the Essence Lash Princess. You can get this at Ulta, you can get it, I saw it at CVS, and this is where I actually bought it because I didn't realize that my CVS carries it now. So I really love the Essence mascaras. I think they're really, really nice, and especially for like $3, like, come on, you can't can't go wrong with that. Um, but I'm going to do my other eye, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is both lashes done, or sets of lashes done. Um, so next I wanna go into my under eyes. Um, I feel like in the camera, I'm not really seeing that they're really popping out too much, but my um, under eyes do get a little bit purple. They get very red though. Um, and I do like to neutralize them with a little help of a um, of a corrector. So I use the Trish McEvoy um, Instant Eye Lift. And the one that I use is, oh, it doesn't have a color on here, but there are two colors. Um, there's this one, which is the lightest one. Then there's another one that's a little bit of a warmer, a little bit darker apricot color. So I recommend that if you have darker, darker, um, you know, dark circles that are a little more purple, it'll help cancel it out. So this is um, not meant to cover, it's meant to neutralize. It's not really meant to conceal, again, meant to neutralize out that color. So it's not looking as purple anymore. It doesn't really show through your concealer as much. Um, so I like this one too, because it is sh more sheer. It's very comfortable under concealer. It doesn't look super dry. We're not gonna need too much, just, uh, just a bit on each side like this. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit on my sides here. And then I like this also because it's super versatile. You don't have to just use this under your eyes. I actually use it around my mouth where I have a little bit of hormonal acne. Um, and it helps, you know, because right now it's not super blemishy and, and pimply. It's a little bit just like those darker marks that I want to, you know, cancel out a little bit. So um, I just go in with my finger and... I just pat everything in. You can use your beauty blender for this too, but um, I, I like the feel of it with my finger, so I know kind of, I don't know, you kind of get a feel for it, you know what you're doing. And again, I'm just patting it in, I'm not swiping. I feel like it helps lock down the color a little bit more. I really like the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It is full coverage, anti-aging, and waterproof, and I use the color 11.5 Light Beige C for cool. 
um i have a very cool more rosy undertone so it was a little challenging to find a good concealer that really matches my skin tone um i t i t tend to go with um, concealers that match my skin tone, especially for underneath my eye, because I found that for me, oh, I didn't even show you how much I use. I'll just use a little bit more over here. So I use like just a little bit, like that much. You really don't need that much for it. Um, and it comes out thick, so you wanna kind of warm it up more on your hand here. But, um, so like I was saying is that I found that once I found a color that matches my skin tone correctly, that the grayness underneath my eye kind of stopped. Um, because when you do go with a lighter color, it looks super gray. And I feel like, you know, you can use a second concealer that is lighter to brighten up your under eyes. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying that if you're having issue with the gray, try doing a color that's more true to your skin tone first and then layer it on top of it. So as you could see, I was just kind of doing it right under my under eye, kind of more in this T-zone type area. I don't do that, I don't use a lot. I use just enough to conceal. I don't think you ever really need that much because you don't wanna cover up your face. You just wanna highlight the best best parts of yourself and you know you just want to correct a few things and I don't know I just don't think makeup is about changing the way you look I, I think it's about enhancing the way that you look so that's my general motto so I'm just again using my fingers and just blotting in oh what's that Okay, it's gonna get into my T-zone a little bit. Okay, so I'm doing all of this concealing because I don't typically wear foundation every day. That's one big thing for me. And I wanted to mention before that I do wear SPF every day, but since I'm not going outside every day anymore, um, I don't use it as much. I don't wanna waste it. It's not needed inside. Um, so I would though, if you go outside ever which i'm not recommending to do during this quarantine definitely stay home but if you ever go outside please 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 wear spf it's so essential um they have there's so many beautiful um spfs out there that's not going to make your skin you know ball up with like the foundation and everything especially if you let it set nicely um there are so many out there. Estee Lauder has a beautiful one. I know Super Goop has a really nice one. So, you know, take a look at those, um, try them out too, and definitely wear them all the time. So end of my PSA. So um, let's move on to doing a little bit of brows. Um, I use the Glossier Brow, brow bleh, Glossier Brow Flick in brown and the Boy Brow in clear. Um, I also use the Benefit Brow products in shade three and I love them. I just wanted to try something new. I like to, again, do everything very natural. So I just follow the shape of my brows. I apologize for the shape of my brows right now. I'm trying to maintain them and figure out my shape, but obviously I have not gotten them done in a long time. I wish I did it right before we had to be quarantined, um, but I did not get the chance to do that. Um, so that's one of the first things I'll be doing once we're um, allowed to leave our homes. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is actually use the 7B brush that I just spoke about from Anastasia Beverly Hills and just brush up my brows here. So this one actually does have a nice shape. It's just not matching my other one right now. But again, that'll be corrected in time. So. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of, like I said, just follow it and just gently create nice brow strokes. I'm really just filling in like any sparse areas. And the nice thing about this too, and especially not having put on any foundation up here yet, because usually if I do put on foundation and it goes around here, 
I'll do my brows before that so that um, if I do make a mistake, I can just gently wipe it, which I think is really nice to know that I can do that. I'm just gonna brush them out just to make sure everything's pretty evenly distributed. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other brow and I will be right back. So now I'm going to use a little bit of the boy brow and just set everything into place. Um, and Benefit has a really, really, really nice clear brow gel as well. I'm just really liking um, the way boy brow is looking on me lately. I just feel like it's a little bit thicker and it's not like a true, true gel. It's more of just a, it's, it's like a gel pomade kind of hybrid. Just feel like it really sets everything. The only thing though is that it's not exactly clear when you first put it on um, and sometimes it goops out. <laughs> Sometimes it goops out um, and it looks a little bit white. So just make sure that you're catching that. And I'm sure it'll dry down clear, but I haven't let it get to that point because I'll immediately just brush it out so that it does look more clear. You know, I don't think they look too bad for not having uh, gotten my brows done in a little while. So I'm just gonna pat myself on the back for that. Okay, so here they are. Um, I just finished all the pomade and everything. I just set everything into place. Um, what I want to do now is do a little bit of highlighting, which is probably everyone's favorite subject. You can use, again, the Charlotte Tilbury um, Hollywood Flawless Filter, like I used before as the primer. Um, it's still showing through, it's still giving that beautiful glow, but you can use it again um, as an additional highlight if you want to pump it up a little bit more. Um, but what I'm going to be using is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate um, in shade intensity one so here it is it's a contour and highlighting duo i'm not a big contouring girl but i have started getting into that um i guess non-touring type situation um, that you've been seeing on a few people so i don't like that super chiseled look i just want to give a little bit of definition to my face so this is something that i'll use for it the other one is just the highlighting um section of it it's it's just like a white clear kind of a color so it's going to go on clear but it still has why it looks a little bit white is it has a little bit of that white metallic kind of sheen to it so i think this is really beautiful it gives you a gorgeous natural highlight i'm going to show it to you right now and you're going to be just as amazed by it as i am so i like to do you know a, the normal high points but i actually bring it down a little bit on my cheekbone because I think that the sun naturally does hit this full area rather than like just right here. So, I mean, like, look at this. This is just, like, it's, it's just beautiful. And in the sun too, and in person, it just gives you this very natural, very natural glow, which I, I absolutely adore this project, this, oh my God, this project, this, this product so I'm just gonna put it in your normal highlighting spots so now we're going to move into powder um, I use the Huda Beauty easy bake loose baking and setting powder in shade cupcake um, this is what it looks like and this is the back where it says cupcake I'm just going to dip the Blendiful from Tati Westbrook in here. Um, this is really, really nice because I actually got into the habit of using my beauty blender to, you know, tap in my powder. Um, I also use a blush, uh, uh, I'll also use a brush, but I found that these work really, really well for powder. I think it sets it in really nicely. It doesn't look cakey. And that also has to do with the powder too, because the powder doesn't, you know, look cakey at all. So... I'm gonna first start with my under eyes and I'm gonna tap out any of the concealer that may have set into my fine lines here. Make sure everything looks smooth. And then I'm gonna just kind of fold this in half here and tap it into place. I'm gonna pull it up to my lash line and over to my wing because it's still translucent enough to cover my wing, but I just don't want it going anywhere. So now I'm gonna to pull to the sides of my nose and down to like just my T-zone area where I get a little bit oily sometimes. And I'm gonna dip right back in. Um, and I mean, just look at this. Like it's just so natural. It sets it so beautifully. Like you can see the true difference here 
between this more of like that glowy um you know just use concealer kind of look to a beautifully just matte natural looking um powdered finish but not powdered finish if that makes sense so i'm gonna do my other eye i love the way this looks it just looks so nice um okay so i'm gonna do a little bit on my chin and then a little on my forehead just a few places where i don't want to look too shiny okay now I want to do my lower lashes, so I'm actually going to use my Essence um, Lash Princess for this. Okay, so I actually think that's just about it. Um, this is, like I said, this is my normal everyday routine. Um, I think that it's still extremely practical, practical to be wearing... Um, you know, when you just roll out of bed and go into your living room. Um, I love putting on makeup. I just, it makes me feel just so incredible. Um, can't describe it. I'm sure everyone else feels that way too. Makeup is, is such an obsession. Um, so I hope you guys really like this video. Um, I hope you come back and watch more video, the more videos that I put out. So like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that. Um, and also check me out on Instagram. I'm Liz Pazler Beauty. Um, and I will be, you know, putting out different things on there. Um, there's not gonna, there's not too much going on right now, just because this is, like I said, my first video. So um, I plan to do much more. So, uh, like I said, I hope you guys come back, and uh, I'll see you soon.